Hey, welcome to my daily devotions for Sunday. This is September 25th, 2022. We're going to look at Romans 16, John chapter 16, Psalm 20, 128, and Job chapter 2. Let's pray. Father, speak to our hearts today in the Bible. Uh, make a difference. Crawl inside us with the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth of your word and change us from the inside out into your image for what you want for us. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 16. We'll finish up the book of Romans. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in Centrea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and to, <clears throat> to give her any help she may need from you for she has been a great help to many people, including me. <clears throat> Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They have risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful for them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Eponetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junius, my relatives who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, whom I love in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, my dear friend Stachus. Uh, greet Apelles, and tested and approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my relative. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena, Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers with them. What a bunch of names, you know. I'm doing pretty well on those so far. Greet Philologus, there it go, there it goes. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus and his sister, the Olympus and, and Olympus and all the saints with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions. This is big stuff right here. Big, big for churches. I, I, I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary the, to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving the Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, and he will. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason, Sosipater, and my relatives. I, Tertius, who write this, who write down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, send you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city director of public works, and our brother Quartus, send their greetings. Notice the relationships. That's huge. The relationships are profound. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all, nation, all nations might believe and obey him. That's the obedience of faith. It's the same words as 1.5, Romans 1.5. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. The end of an amazing book. John chapter 16, 16th chapter of the Gospel of John. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. Popped up in the book of Acts all over the place. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I've told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. Uh, yet not one of you asked me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. 
it is, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor, that's the Holy Spirit, okay, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of the world now stands condemned. Realize that the Holy Spirit has everything to do with bringing people to Christ. And everything to do with inspiring us once we're in Christ and empowering us for him. Wow! It's important teaching, folks. I have much to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, notice he's the spirit of truth. All truth comes from him. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Spirit makes known the things of God to us. Powerful, folks. In a little while, and he does that in the Scripture. He does that with the Scripture. He speaks to us all the time. In a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean? By saying, in a little while you will see me no more, no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another, one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve. But your grief will be turned to joy. Talk about the resurrection, folks. Okay? Three days without, without him, they won't see him. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time for grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer... Ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not only asked for you have you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you'll receive, and your joy will be complete. Let's talk about prayer. Don't ever back off on prayer. Okay. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you love me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus asked his disciples, Now are you speaking clearly? Then Jesus' disciples said, Now are you speaking clearly without figures of speech? Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Yeah, I suppose so. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has now come when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. We need that today, don't we? We need that today. And then Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Oh, we need to be there, don't we? You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around the table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. He, that's, that's the truth. Okay. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. May you live to see your children's children. Peace upon Israel. That's why God, grandchildren are so cool. Okay. That, that's a really cool part of my life. And then Job chapter 2. Good old Job. Job chapter 2. 
On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity. Though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is in your hands. You must spare his life, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery, scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to you, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Ah, the wisdom of Job is profound. In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Then Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Naamathite, heard about all the troubles that he had that had come upon him. They set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. We will find that their comfort was not always comforting. That's the nature of things. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Great, great book of Job. Let's take a minute and pray. Hope God has spoken to you through his word. There's a lot there. Bless your heart. Father, thank you for speaking. I pray that you would take the truth of your word and apply it to our lives. Change us here, Heavenly Father, from the inside out by the truth we find here. And bless this day, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I will talk to you soon.